Hey, I'm Georgia and you're watching the 2022 edition of ABCSL, brought to you by the Daniel Morcom Foundation. Today, we're going to be learning about setting personal boundaries and having some brave conversations. We'll talk to some boundary experts, help a boy assert his boundaries with others, and find out how to recognize, react, and report unsafe situations. But first, let's cross the newsroom to find out what the Daniel Morcom Foundation has been doing the past year to help keep kids safe across Australia. Hello, I'm Kay McGrath. The Daniel Morcom Foundation is dedicated to teaching children about their personal safety and how to recognise, react or report unsafe situations. Last October, more than a million people took part in the Foundation's annual Day for Daniel. The Day for Daniel is Australia's largest child safety awareness day, where children wear red in honour of Daniel Morcom and participate in critical safety lessons. Over the past 12 months, founders Bruce and Denise Morecambe have visited schools right across the country, delivering child safety presentations, giving students the tools to prevent unsafe situations and promote lifelong health and well-being. Every day, the team at the Daniel Morecambe Foundation focus on making Australia a safer place for all children by producing free child safety resources for kids, parents, carers and the community. You're up to date now. Let's go back to Georgia. You're watching ABCSL! Woo! Kids are often taught by grown-ups that they have to do what they're told most of the time. But did you know that children have special rights that grown-ups have to listen to and respect no matter what? These include, children have the right to have their privacy protected, adults must always act in the best interests of a child, Children have the right to share their thoughts freely, to access information, to be protected from harm and abuse, and children have the right to be safe, heard and cared for. These rights are the same for each and every child all over the world. It doesn't matter where they live, what religion they practice, who their family are or what cultural group they belong to, all of Australia's children have these rights. When we are feeling safe and happy, it's easy to not think about them. But knowing your rights can help give you the confidence to set personal safety boundaries and speak up when someone isn't respecting your rights. Adults have the responsibility to protect all children, so it's important to talk to a safety helper if you ever feel unsafe. But what are personal safety boundaries and do kids know how to set them? Let's ask our junior journo, JJ, to find out more. Out of bounds on the fall. He's kicked it out of bounds. Deliberate out of bounds. The boundary umpire is signalled out of bounds. Thanks, Georgia. I'm here with some students from Macabat State School who are going to help me speak to some boundary experts to find out what a boundary is exactly and why we need them. Can you tell me what a boundary is? A boundary is a line or border around the outside of a shape, right? Thanks, JJ. That's one definition. But a boundary can also mean a rule that you create for yourself that lets others know how they are allowed to treat you. You get to choose how comfortable you are with things others say or do, and you get to decide how you interact with other people. Like Georgia said, these are the rights of a child. Wait, what? Think of it like this. You are the boss of your body, and your personal boundaries are the rules that tell other people how they should treat you. I'm still confused. That's okay. We're here today to speak to some real boundary experts, so hopefully they will make it clearer for you. What kind of boundaries are there in AFL? Well, there's quite a few boundaries, Edie. There's obviously the boundary line around the outside. You can see the white markings. There's also a boundary that you don't want to cross in regards to talking to opposition players, um, especially the umpires. Um, so you need to be uh, stay within those rules and within those boundaries. Are there any boundaries when being tackled? There is. There's a lot of boundaries being tackled. Um, in the rule box, we have to stay below our shoulders. We can't go and make any contact with the head. And with our knees, we can't make any contact below the knees as well. So there's quite a large area that you can actually tackle the opposition players. And it's really important you stay inside those boundaries. 
We have to respect other people's boundaries. Um, no, we know that uh, there's different rules for playing the game um, than there is in real life. And we know that there's tackling in the game, but in real life it's not okay to tackle people. There's a fine line between um, those contests and um, making a tackle and, and trying not to hurt them, but also winning the ball. So, um, yeah, it's important that we, we uh, take into account all the different um, elements in the situation and, and make the right decision. Yes, I think there are times where they push the boundaries, but I feel like on the field, uh, most players are pretty respectful and that's how we like to play. We like to play hard but fair and not push the boundaries too far. It's never okay for people to cross our boundaries in real life or online. Can you tell me about a time when someone crossed a personal boundary? Yeah, I can remember back when I was playing with my brothers um, in the backyard um, and we'd finished, we'd finished playing a little bit of basketball on the tennis court and um, I think maybe I might have beaten him that time for once, which was rare, um, and he might have hit me on the arm or something like that, and I just thought that's, uh, he's crossed the line a little bit there. Yeah, I think uh, this day and age, social media is a big one. Um, so I think um, in that way, it's, it's, it's a way that people can chat to you um, and say things they want to say without actually being face to face, which can be just as deadly and just as dangerous. So um, I think when um, people can um, do that, sometimes you feel like they can um, yeah, cross those boundaries in what they say on social media. At times players will um, challenge you verbally and physically, but being able to take a deep breath and, and understand that it's just a game um, is super important, but um, at the same time being able to communicate with those around you, your teammates, uh, your coaching staff, friends, family off the field, um, just having really good communication with everyone. When people cross our boundaries, we might feel scared, uncomfortable or unsafe. Are you ever asked to do something you're not comfortable with? Yeah, so um, this sort of stuff with the cameras and stuff, so I get uncomfortable with this sort of stuff. Um, sometimes there's situations that you get put in that make you a little bit uncomfortable. It's a great question. Um, I think when someone gets really close to you and gets in your I suppose in your personal space. If something happens on field that I don't like, I try and put the arms down and scrunch your face up, but I'm usually pretty good at the moment. Boundaries are important because we all have the right to be safe. When I first came to the Brisbane Lions, they're the really just trying to create a safe environment for our players where they can um, grow and, and achieve what they're capable of. Setting boundaries can be hard, but we're always allowed to. What are some ways you communicate to someone that they've overstepped a boundary in a nice way? You know, no one wants to have their feelings hurt um, or feel like you're sad or um, maybe someone's, someone's bullying you or trying to sort of beat up on you, I guess. Um, so the way I would try and explain it to them is that, hey, that, that hurts my feelings. Um, therefore, can you not do that again, please? And say, look, I think um, I don't want to do that. Um, thanks anyway and just yeah get away from them in, in the safest way possible. We don't have to handle it on our own. When sometimes on the field is not right, who can you tell? When something's not going right on the field we can talk to our team leaders, the leaders of our team, um, tell them what's going on and what we're seeing and um, offer some support and guidance to the rest of the team. Uh, you can talk to a myriad of people. Um, you've got, you know, staff members, um, physios, coaches, um, your teammates, umpires, those sort of things. If if people are um, pushing those boundaries that we talked about, um, I guess being able to communicate with the umpire and, and tell them that they're not doing the right thing is really important. Talking to a safety helper is always the right thing to do. Who do you talk to if you feel worried or unsafe? There's multiple people out there generally to talk to, but. You know, it could be your brother, you could be your auntie, your uncle, um, whoever your safe person is, I guess. It's different for everyone. So, um, yeah, any one of those people that you feel feel trust, trusted to talk to about something like that, I guess, is um, the one to go for. Did that help you understand about boundaries, JJ? Kind of. I'm still a bit confused. I think I know what boundaries are, the line between comfortable and uncomfortable, um, but I'm still unsure how to set my boundaries. Do you have an example, JJ? Maybe we could help you figure it out. Hmm, the other day I had a terrible game of football and it was all because I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before. 
I wanted to go to bed, but my friends wanted me to stay online and play an online game with them. Originally, I agreed to play for half an hour, but we ended up playing till late on a different server with kids I didn't know. I wanted to go to bed, and I didn't want to play with people, but I didn't know how to tell my friends about my boundaries and whether they would understand. I was feeling really stressed during the last part of the game because I was uncomfortable and worried about how I would play the next day. Yeah, I get it. Communicating our boundaries can be tricky, especially when we're worried about offending someone or being made fun of. Hmm. Let's go to Georgia and see if she has any advice. Some great explanations, and they are absolutely right. The boundaries in sport are similar to the boundaries around people, but there are also many differences. In sport, the boundary line is clear, and mostly everyone agrees whether the ball is within the boundary line or out of bounds. Some of these boundaries are very clear, just like in sport, and it's against the law for anyone to cross those lines. Children's rights are an example of these obvious lines. Your right to be safe from harm, cared for and protected is sort of like an invisible boundary line that circles you. All adults have to respect these boundaries to keep you safe. A personal boundary is something that you decide. Put simply, it is a line between feeling comfortable and feeling uncomfortable. Setting and communicating boundaries helps us to understand what we really want, helps others to understand our needs and makes us more confident. When things are unsafe or uncomfortable, our amazing bodies send us alerts or body clues. When we get a body clue, sometimes setting a boundary can help us get out of a tricky situation. So for example, saying, I'm not comfortable with this. JJ wanted to get an early night before his footy match, but his friends wanted him to play an online game. He told his friends that he could only play for half an hour because he had footy in the morning. He ended up playing for way longer than he wanted and playing on a server with a bunch of other friends that he didn't know. JJ had noticed that he didn't feel right. He was breathing faster, his leg was twitching, his body was giving him clues that something wasn't right. He didn't know what to do, so he just kept playing because he didn't want to upset his friends or be made fun of. In this situation, JJ clearly knew his boundaries. They were, one, he wants to go to bed early to get ready for footy. Two, he isn't comfortable with playing with people online that he doesn't know. Next time JJ recognizes body clues and notices that he isn't feeling comfortable, he could react by saying, guys, I'm gonna go to bed early, or I'm not comfortable with this, or even, I've decided that I'm gonna go to bed because of footy tomorrow, but I hope you guys have a good night. I bet you're thinking, what if his friends made him feel bad or teased him about setting a boundary? And this might happen. But JJ isn't responsible for how his friends react. If his personal boundaries upsets them, then well, that's their problem. Everyone is responsible for how they treat other people, including adults and including you. But the person that you should treat the very best is your awesome and amazing self. Hey, I'm Charlie Cameron from the Brisbane Lions and you're watching ABC SL. Hello and welcome to Out of Bounds, the game where to win, you need to stay within the boundary area. The rules are, I will read a scenario and our contestants will decide if a boundary has been overstepped. Then they will come up with a response that is polite but firm, that the person could say to end the situation and stay safe. If they get it right, they stay where they are and their opponent will take a step back towards the boundary. Ah. The aim of the game is to not go outside the boundary. <laughs> if someone gets an answer incorrect, they will take a step towards the boundary line. Let's meet our first contestant. JJ is 11 and likes football, gaming, his family and hanging out with his friends. Please welcome JJ. Okay, let's see who JJ is playing against. Nina is 9 and also enjoys football along with reading, netball and watching movies. Please welcome Nina. Okay, JJ and Nina, are you ready to play? Yeah! Okay, please step in to the field of play. I will begin to read the first scenario. When you feel a boundary has been crossed, I need you to yell out, 
out of bounds and hold up your flag. I will then get you to identify how you know a boundary was crossed and what the person in the story could say to let the others know. Our first scenario occurs at school with a student named Jane. Jane is in grade six and is excited that she's been invited to hang out with Nikki and Helen, two of the most popular girls in her class. The three girls are playing truth or dare at the bottom of the school oval. When it's Jane's turn, she chooses dare. Helen dares her to jump over the oval fence and do five star jumps and then jump back over the fence onto the oval. Jane starts to feel stressed and her hands become sweaty. She likes playing with Helen and Nikki, but she is uncomfortable breaking school rules and she doesn't want to get into trouble. Out of bounds. Nina, could you please tell me what Jane could say? Um, I really like playing with you, but I'm not comfortable breaking the school rules. If you want me to play, I will not be breaking any rules. Great response. You've really thought this one through. It's great that Jane let Nikki and Helen know that she loved playing with them. That's starting with a real positive. And then let them know where her boundary was. You are safe and can stay where you are in the safety zone. JJ, take a step back towards the boundary. Oh. Our next scenario involves three boys named Ben, Sam and Luke. Ben is playing at Sam's house. They are wrestling on the trampoline and Luke, Sam's older brother, asks to join. Out of bounds. Nina, could you please tell me why you think that's out of bounds? Um, uh, no, sorry, I think I spoke too soon. Nina, you have a penalty, so you can't call out of bounds for the next minute. <gasps> Back to our scenario. Sam says yes, but Ben is worried. Luke is much bigger than they are, and Luke doesn't always notice when he plays a little hard and starts to hurt someone. Out of bounds. JJ? If Ben is feeling uncomfortable, he should set a boundary. He could say, hey guys, I'm going to sit this one out. Yeah, excellent response. I like it. Short, sweet and to the point. No explanation necessary. JJ, you are safe where you are in the safety zone. <laughs> Nina, take a step back towards the boundary. <laughs> This scenario involves a boy named Bob and is a bonus round. If you can give a super detailed answer, you are safe and can bump your opponent back two spaces. Bob receives an embarrassing photo of Susie from his friend Dom. Dom tells Bob to share the photo with his friends and says some really mean things about Susie. Bob doesn't think he should. Out of bounds. Oh, I think JJ just beat you to it, Nina, but I'll give you a chance to answer after JJ shares his. Bob should tell Dom off and send an embarrassing picture of him. Not quite what we were looking for, JJ. <gasps> Nina, I'm going to let you have a turn answering. I think Bob should tell Dom that sending photos of other people is a wrong thing to do without their permission. Then he should go find a safety help to talk to. He could say, hi Dom, I don't like receiving or sharing images of other people without their permission, so I'm not going to share this and I don't think you should either. Excellent work, Nina. <laughs> Telling a safety helper is always the right thing to do. Nina, you are safe. <laughs> JJ, take two steps towards the boundary. <gasps> This is our last scenario before we will go to break. Double bonus round if you can give another detailed answer. Your opponent will take two steps towards the boundary. This could potentially get JJ out of bounds. In this scenario, we have Cindy and Michael. They are siblings and are being minded while their parents are at a party. The babysitter starts tickling them both and they don't like the way they are being touched. Out of bounds. Cindy and Michael should yell, stop. Stop touching me, I don't like it. I want you to stop touching me now. Cindy and Michael should get to a safety help to talk to as soon as possible. Great answer, JJ. I like that the kids were really upfront with their babysitter. If ever someone is touching a child in a way that makes them feel uncomfortable or unsafe, telling the person, I don't like it, 
stop touching me, and then talking to a safety helper is always the right thing to do. JJ, you are safe. Nina, take two steps towards the boundary. Ooh, it's a tie between our two contestants. We will be back later for our final tiebreaker round, Boundary Pets and Boundary Breakers. Sometimes it might be confusing whether a situation is safe or unsafe, but that's okay. Kids don't have to decide if something is safe or unsafe. A safety helper can always help a child figure out these tricky situations, and a child always has the right to say no to an older, bigger, stronger, tougher person, or even an adult when they feel unsafe, threatened, or frightened. There are different types of touches. Loving, friendly, playful, accidental, confusing, hurtful, or unsafe. You make the rules about safe touches. This includes whether you like to be hugged, tickled, high five, or even be pat on the head. Unsafe touches are touches that make a child feel uncomfortable, confused, frightened, scared, or unsafe. Police make these rules about unsafe touches to protect children. And it is never your fault if an adult makes you feel a bit icky or uncomfortable. If this has ever happened to you or someone you know, you should tell a safety helper immediately and it is never too late. If the safety helper doesn't understand, keep telling people in your safety network until someone can help you. Safety helpers are the five people in our safety network. For each finger on the safety hand, think of an adult who you feel safe around, that would listen to you, and that would know what to do to help you if you ever felt uncomfortable, confused, frightened, scared, or unsafe. You might have people in your family, your teacher, a grandparent, aunt, uncle, or maybe a neighbor, or a parent of a friend. It's always a good idea to add Kids Helpline to your safety network. The people who work at Kids Helpline are specially trained to understand about unsafe touching. They'll believe you and they will help you. You can phone them on 1800 55 1800 or you can chat to them online. Don't forget, if there ever is an emergency, to call 000. And one last thing, it's never okay for someone to ask you to keep a secret about a touch. This rule applies everywhere, including at home, doctors, school, or even church. If someone asks you to keep a secret about a touch, even if it's someone you know or a family member, it is not okay and it is important to talk to a safety helper as soon as possible. Remember, it is never a child's fault. Okay, let's get back to the game show. I wanna see who wins out of bounds. Welcome back. You are watching Out of Bounds. We are back for our final tiebreaker round. It's neck and neck between JJ and Nina. Who will be named the safe boundary champion? Let's find out. The final round involves recognising a boundary pest or a boundary breaker by their behaviour and identifying the most appropriate response to the situation. For every correct answer, you can take a step forward towards the safety zone. To help you out, I will go over the features of a boundary pest and a boundary breaker. A boundary pest is someone who ignores other people's personal boundaries and makes people feel uncomfortable. They can also make people feel bad about asserting personal boundaries by saying things like, if you were my true friend, you would do this, or I'm sad that you won't do that. Boundary breakers are people who use threats or bribes to get people to break their boundaries or try to make someone promise to keep a secret that a boundary has been broken. They say things like, if you don't tell anyone about this, I'll give you a present. Or if you don't tell anyone about this, something bad will happen. Nina and JJ, are we clear on the difference? Situation one, you have a new set of special pencils and your friend keeps taking them without asking. Boundary pass, you could say, Please don't do that. I'm only comfortable lending pencils if you ask first. Great response, Nina. Take a step forward. <laughs> Situation two. You have missed a few days of school due to a personal medical problem. Your friend keeps asking over and over again why you were away. Badger Pest, you could say, I don't want to talk about personal information. Please stop asking. Excellent, JJ. Take a step forward. 
Oh, this is neck and neck. Situation three. A kid at your school took all of your lunch and warned you that if you told anyone, they would find you and beat you up. Boundary breaker. You should tell a safety helper. Brilliant answer, Nina. Take a step forward. <laughs> Situation four. A neighbour grabs your buttocks and tells you if you don't tell anyone, they will give you a present. Boundary pass, you could say, stop, I don't like it. Oh, Nina, I like that you told the neighbour to stop, but I'm not sure if that goes under the definition of a boundary pest. They're definitely a boundary breaker. You could say, stop touching me really loudly and then get to a safe place as soon as possible, then talk to a safety helper. Fabulous, JJ. You can take a step forward. <laughs> Nina, I won't make you take a step backwards because you did identify that you should tell your neighbour to stop. Nina and JJ are currently tied. Whoever answers this correctly will win the game. Our final situation. Your friend wants you to keep a secret about an unsafe touch that happened at a party because they are worried that they will get into trouble. Boundary breaker, touching should never be a secret. Correct. Take a step forward into the safety zone. Nina, you have won the game. Thank you all for watching Out of Bounds. That's our show for today. If you'd like to play, ask your teacher to download the game. See you later. Wow, what a great game. Well done, guys. It's tough identifying boundary pests and boundary breakers. Lastly, we're going to talk about... Sorry, can we just pause recording for a second? On the script it says penis, scrotum, vagina, and vulva and words like that. Are you sure I shouldn't be saying private parts instead? No, 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 no. We call them by their correct names. Some people get a bit funny using the correct names of private body parts because they are words we don't use in everyday conversations. But it is really important that everyone knows the right names because knowing the correct words for private body parts help kids if they ever need to ask a question or tell a safety helper something about that body part, especially if someone has touched that body part. Oh, okay, well, that makes sense. I don't know why I felt funny about that for a bit. <laughs> it's okay. I felt uncomfortable at first too. I was taught that vagina, penis and anus were words that we don't use and that we don't talk about. I've heard people call them private parts or call them silly nicknames, like your flower family jewels or butt. But then I found out that if a child knows the correct names of their body parts, it signals to unsafe people that the child has had body safety education. And this can help protect the child from being hurt by somebody. So I decided that even though it's a bit embarrassing to say penis, scrotum, testicle, vagina, vulva or anus, I would put that embarrassment aside because grown-ups are responsible for keeping kids safe. You're right. There is nothing wrong with saying words like penis, vagina, eye, hand, elbow. Just because they are private body parts doesn't mean that we have to give them silly names because there is nothing wrong or embarrassing about those body parts. Like imagine if we called our hands our claws. <laughs> <laughs> or our eyes peepers. Or our head a melon. Kids should know that no one can touch, look at or take photos of their private parts. Like their penis or vagina. Adults should not show a child their private body parts or show them pictures of their own or somebody else's private body parts. That's against the law. It is never a safe secret and it is never okay. If that has happened to a child, they should talk to a safety helper. It is never a child's fault and it is never too late to tell. There are times when a doctor might need to look at or touch a child's body parts. How can the child know if this is safe or unsafe? Easy. If it is safe and necessary, say the doctors, then it is never a secret. If a child has had their private body parts touched and asked to be kept a secret, that is definitely not okay. They're not in trouble, no way. Okay, I think I've got this. Can we record again? 
rolling. For health and safety reasons, it is good for children to know the correct names of their private body parts. All people have a buttocks, anus, nipples, and breasts. Some people also have a vagina and a vulva. And some have a penis, testicles, and scrotum. These are body parts and have names the same as your stomach, shin, or shoulder. Knowing these names of these body parts can protect kids from unsafe behavior. Private body parts are those covered by a bathing suit. Your mouth is also a private body part because no one is allowed to touch it, kiss it, or put anything in it. Your mouth belongs to you. These areas are private, but never secret. Unsafe people might try to touch, look at, or take photos of a child's private body parts, and that is never okay. If that ever happens to a child, it's important that they immediately report it to someone in their safety network. You know, your safety team of helpers. Remember your safety network? If you have been part of the ABCSL for a while, you'll remember that each child has a safety network made up of a team of five adults that make them feel safe. See you later, potato.